We're here in Geneva, in Switzerland, at the Overcoming Inequalities in a Fractured World Conference hosted by the United Nations Research Institute for Social Development. I had the pleasure to speak with some of the speakers. Enjoy this mini-series about inequalities. Hi, my name is Carla Beatriz de Paulo. I'm from Brazil. I'm a researcher and a civil servant. What is your main research focus? The dynamics of social classes in Brazil and how uh, social classes relate with the state and social policies. How did you arrive at this topic? Since uh, my undergraduate studies, I was always interested in, in social policies in a way to improve the quality of life of the population. And, uh, and I was also very interested in the dynamics of social classes in, in Brazil. The, the middle class and the working class and the elites behaved throughout our history. So in the 2000s, when we had major economic growth in Brazil and there was a debate about the rise of a new middle class, I decided to, to take a deeper look into this phenomenon and study how middle classes behaved during our recent history. Here at the conference, you presented the results of your recent studies. Could you tell me about this? In 2013, I started uh, my master's studies at the University of Brasilia and I decided to, to study uh, this phenomenon of the new middle class and what was the level of access of, that these people had to health uh, and education services, whether public or private in order to understand if these people, they were really less dependent on state social policies. So uh, I analyzed data from 2003 to 2013 of the Brazilian National Household Survey to compare and contrast uh, the public and the private provision of health and education services. What I concluded was that uh, Despite what had been said about the new middle class being able to consume private health and education services, data showed that, uh, in fact, most of these people, they were still using health services and, educa and education services provided by the state. Why is this result relevant? When people argued that the segment of the population uh, didn't need public services anymore because they were now able to, to buy them in the market, it meant that the state could focus only on the extreme poor and these people they could afford their social services. So research has shown that in fact uh, these people they still largely depend on the state to satisfy their basic needs in health and education. And was this unexpected? Since the, the constitution of 1988, all Brazilians have the right of health provision, so our health system is universal and anyone can demand for services and education as well. So uh, the state has the duty to provide education, primary and secondary education for all social classes. But throughout the, the, our history, middle classes and uh, elite uh, have abandoned public services and decided to pay for private education and private health services. So the public services uh, basically uh, attend the working class and uh, poor people. This is basically how, how things work. But on the other hand, despite the fact that people usually pay for a private health insurance, depending on the case, they they also depend on the public health uh, sector because for high complexity treatments usually you have to go to the public health centers uh, because the private sector is unable to provide this kind of treatment and uh, brazilians they also receive uh, tax exemptions 
for uh, when they declare that they use private health and education services. So uh, in the end, uh, everybody depends somehow on the state to have access to health and education, whether public or private. And what does this result mean for policymaking? I think it would be important for, for the government to focus not only in fostering and regulating the private market of uh, health insurances and private education, but strengthening the provision of public social services, expanding and improving the quality of public education and also of uh, public health. What are, in your opinion, the biggest challenges in this field in Brazil right now? And what would you change if you could? I would insist on the provision of uh, universal social services, not only health and education, but also transportation uh, and housing. And I would also uh, implement policies to tackle uh, inequality rates, which are very high in Brazil in terms of income and property. So this is basically what I think we, we need now. Is there somebody who inspires or inspired you in a special way? When I was in university, during my undergraduate studies, I had some professors who were also civil servants and uh, it was a very promising moment in Brazil at that time, in 2007, 2008, and uh, they really inspired me to not only work with research, but also try to, to apply for a public position and to work with policy implementation. So uh, this was really important for me and they made me see uh, how uh, academia and, uh, and the civil service can really complement each other. Why and how do you think that research and civil public service complement each other? At university, in academic debates, if you are not careful enough, you can detach yourself from the, the real world and how things really happen and the limits and the constraints of the, the role and the possibilities of the state. So when you, you work in the government, you are aware of all these possibilities and constraints and you become more realistic. And on the other hand, if you only work in, in the civil service, you can uh, become too skeptical and too pragmatic and refrain from, having, uh, from seeing a bigger picture and making some important reflections. So uh, that's why I think having both perspectives is very complementing and uh, enriching for both of them. If you could speak with an influential politician, what would you tell her or him? I would uh, suggest to this person to take gender and race and social inequalities into consideration while uh, implementing programs. And I would also suggest, actually I would warn them about the importance of communicating with the population in a very transparent and clear way so that people from all social classes are able to, to understand how the, the policies at, that are being implemented work and how they can improve their lives and the life, the, the life of the collective. In your opinion, is there a need to improve the understanding of the role of the state? We have some problems related to that because usually when public services work, people they don't realize that it has to do with the state, it has to do with the government. But when they fail, it's when they realize that it has to do with the government. So I think it's important to, to communicate with the, popu uh, the population constantly about what's been done so that they understand that this is not something that it's happening because of only the economy, uh, because of their personal effort, because otherwise you can think that your improvements in life were uh, due to your effort and your merit 
And I think this can be very harmful for a collective mentality and progressive social changes. What would you tell a recipient of public aid? We are in a very difficult moment right now in my country and we are very concerned especially about uh, poor people and how it's going to be their lives in the future. But I, I think uh, I would tell these people that they should fight for their rights because they, they, they have lots of rights and they are probably unaware of their rights and their power and they should demand, find ways to demand the state provision of uh, public services because we have a highly regressive tax regime in Brazil so uh, everybody's funding these services and uh, the people who need the most uh, should be able to receive them. How personal is what you are doing to you? I would say it's very personal. I think the word is, is very unfair and uh, this bothers me a lot and it bothers me even more as a, a person who should be working for, for changing this. Uh, not only academically, but professionally. So all types of inequality, they bother me a lot. Not only social, but also in Brazil's case, racial inequalities and gender inequalities as a woman. I think these are my main concerns. What is your perspective about gender and race inequality in Brazil? I think uh, gender and race inequalities, they appear in different forms depending on the country. So Brazil, for example, we had a slavery past, so race is a very important issue in our country. But since we, we never had formal segregation, as other countries like the US or South Africa, most people, they believe that we don't have racism anymore and we are very we are a mixed uh, population and there is no racism there there are no open forms of racism but i disagree on this perspective if you check data about access to the labor labor market income education health it's possible to notice how the black people they are underprivileged and they suffer several forms of subtle uh, racism and discrimination so this is something that we have to take into consideration while formulating public policies uh, in Brazil is something very important. And about gender, even though we don't have, um, like some countries, some formal mechanisms of discrimination between men and women, sexism is something very uh, common in the Brazilian society and we still have uh, gender gaps in several fields in terms of uh, payment, uh, labor relations, reproductive rights and it's also very important to take this into consideration while formulating public policies. We often speak about what developing countries can learn from developed countries, but what could other countries learn from Brazil? First, in terms of uh, public policies, over the last decade we had some very successful experiences uh, in terms of food security policies, uh, water provision and conditional cash transfers that uh, can be very helpful for developing countries. And in terms of, uh, in a broader view, I think we are in general uh, very welcoming and uh, warm. So I think this is something that can be very useful too. Do you have a dream? My, my dream, which I haven't achieved yet, is to work on the implementation of a social program in a way that I feel that I'm changing our social reality. Because so far I have done research, I have worked on public policies, but in a very distant way from our reality. And I could see some impacts 
but something very broad. So I would like to, to work on something more specific and really have uh, get in touch with, uh, with change. Thank you so much for this conversation. You're welcome. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. And thank you so much for sharing. Next time, we are going to continue with our mini-series about inequalities. I hope to see you soon again. Bye and ciao.